Okay, right. So I'm going to go over this brilliant poem, My Last Duchess by Robert Browning. Um, this poem is written in what we call as a dramatic monologue. So it's basically a in the form of as if it was a character speaking on the stage. Um, so it's a real character poem. It's the Duke of Ferrara, based on a real person who was rumoured to have killed his wife, but we don't know about that. She was rumoured to have been poisoned. Um, so first of all, this is written in rhyming couplets and iambic pentameter. And it's pretty regular throughout. So it's very, um, it's a very regular poem, um, ordered, and I guess kind of uh, respectful in a way of the poetic form. And you can say that says a lot about the character of the Duke. This po poem is a real character piece, really. It tells you all about the Duke's personality. and his ideas of what love is and what love should be. So we get enjambment in this as it is a, a monologue. It's like a speech. So you get the flow of a speech, but you also get the caesuras for effect, um, especially in places like looking as if she were alive, which from the beginning tells us that we presume she is dead because looking as if she were alive, as if as if she was alive. So that's our first hint that it's a bit sinister here. Um, then you get some, there's a lot of polite conventions here. Wilt, please you sit and look at her. That's very polite, but it masks a more sinister. Really, it's an order. He's saying sit down, but he's saying it in a very nice way. Of course, he has the um, authority here. He has the power. He's talking to a servant from another house. And that house is the servant is of a, a person who's um, the daughter of the house. He's, he's going to be her, his next duchess. Also, looking at just the title, my last duchess, there's a double meaning here. Is last, as in previous, the last one I had, or last ever. OK, so we're presuming not last ever because he's about to have a new wife. Um, in the brackets here, brackets are usually some casual remark, but the brackets here, or you could call it parenthesis. If you wanted to be posh, hides, masks an important point here. None puts by the port curtain I've drawn for you, but I his power and possessiveness, I guess. Sorry, my pen is as usual rubbish. Let's try that again. Um, it seemed as they would ask me if they durst, if they dared, okay? Why are these people so scared of him? It implies fear and that he likes that they're afraid. How such a glance can must at first use to turn and ask thus, sir? Really brings attention to the next thing he's going to say. It was not her husband's presence only called that spot of joy into the Duchess's cheek, okay? He's jealous. Possessive, perhaps. Then he goes on to describe the things that Fra Pandolf, the painter, might have said to make her blush. OK. Bear with me. So um, 
these are the compliments that he might have given her. Such stuff was courtesy, she thought, and cause enough for calling up that spot of joy. Um, he's called it, he's rep repeated that, spot of joy, spot of joy. That is what bothers him. They give her joy and presumably he doesn't. And it's such a small thing, a spot of joy. But it bothers him so much. Um, she had a heart. How shall I say? You have these little um, throwaway phrases here. These little. It mimics natural speech, the fillers that we use in natural speech. But the pausing as well. He is trying to say it politely. And of course, what he's trying to say so politely is he thinks that she is being unfaithful to him. She liked what air she looked on and her looks went everywhere. There's hyperbole here. Showing his jealousy. An obsessive nature. Sir, so was all one, meaning everything was the same to her. And then he goes on to describe all the little things or the things that make her laugh and smile. So she seems a happy, lovely, positive person. But everything that she's thanking people for, everything that's making her smile, if it's not him, he's not happy, basically. So she smiled at the sunset, which is dropping of the daylight in the West. Might a little bit be a metaphor for her life beginning to close as well. She smiled at the sunset. Somebody gave her some cherries. The white mule she rode around on. She loved that. He doesn't like the fact that each and all would draw from her alike the approving speech or blush at least. She seems to be blushing quite a lot um, and she he doesn't like that. She thanked men. Good. He likes her to thank men because that's only polite, exclamative says Yura here. But you don't thank them too much. But thanks somehow, I know not how, there's another of those throwaway lines to mimic natural speech. As if she ranked my gift of a 900 years old name with anybody's gift. His status and power comes out here. I married her. I gave her the name of Ferrara. She's the Duchess of Ferrara. That's a better gift than anyone else should have given her. And she should not even look at anybody else. That's what he's saying. This whole bit is a bit complicated. But what he's saying is, maybe I should have said something, but why should I? I'm so far above her. Why should I have to explain myself? So, in then would be some stooping and I choose never to stoop. Again, pride. Okay. He will not stoop, i.e. bend down, which is a metaphor as well. I won't metaphorically stoop down to her level. Um, and then, oh, sir, again, she smiled, no doubt, when her eye passed her, but he passed without much the same smile. He wants to be above everyone. And then the best line in the whole thing, or the, with all the caesuras here, 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 well, that's end stopped. And here, this grew, I gave commands, then all smiles stopped together. She was killed. You could also take it to mean that she just did what he said and didn't smile anymore, but we know that's not true. She's not alive anymore. There's a portrait of her. He's implying he had her killed. And all smiles, perhaps not just her, all the people who made her smile as well. So you get how his, um, I want to say more than jealousy, obsessive nature has led to her death. He's kind of crazed at this bit. It's very, very sinister. And in fact, there's the sibilance here, which helps with that sinister atmosphere of much the same smile, this grew, I gave commands, then all smiles stop together, there she stands as if alive. But again, that's like a repeating of that first phrase, um, where as if she's alive, but she's not. So that really brings back the phrase that she dared again. And then just quite casually, after that very serious thing, he's basically said, I had her killed. Now he's saying, do you want to get up now? 
Right, that's the end. So it's a contrast in tone here. And it's the whole thing is a threat to this new family. If you're the daughter of your house doesn't obey me and doesn't just um, uh, look at me, then this might happen to her. That's what he's saying. This bit is now saying, I know that I can ask what I want for a dowry. A dowry was a sum of money that was given by the bride's father. When you get when you choose a bride, you also get some money along with it in high families. So what he's saying is, sorry. I can choose my price. So this is blackmail as well. Whatever I ask for, you better give it to me, as this will happen to your master's daughter as well. Um, then he says, of course, I don't mean it like that. It's not just for the dowry that I want her. His fair daughter's self, as I avowed at starting, is my object. I obviously want her, not the money, which we now know is ironic. Also note the, ter note the term object. I mean, yes, it's short for objective. That's my objective. But seeing women as objects, perhaps. Which, of course, they really were. If you pretty much were, you know, getting money, they were being bought and sold like that. And it was all through men. The husband decided, the father decided. And then he changes again. Nay, we'll go together down, sir, which makes me think that the other guy's trying to get away. Because then he has to say to him, no, we'll go together. So he's provoking fear. He's a fearsome character. And then this bit, which I always think is a little odd, but after the caesura here, um, notice Neptune, so you've got the um, alliteration there to bring attention to this bit. He then just shows on the way down a statue. So we can only assume Robert Browning put this in for a reason. So we need to think, what is this statue of? Why does Robert Browning bother um, doing this? Of, of course, Robert Browning is bookending these by show, telling us, he, first of all, he shows the painting and then he's showing a statue at the end. So it's like bookending his little story about how he basically had his wife killed. So the statue is a metaphor. It's Neptune, the god of the sea, powerful Neptune, taming a beautiful sea creature like a seahorse. Well, it's obvious to see what that's a metaphor for, how he thinks he appears to people, this powerful god, and he, sh and, and he should be taming everything. The tiny seahorses should do what he says, i.e. his wives. Um, and then he just kind of states his, um, clarifies or um, emphasises his status at the end by telling us that's a rare piece. And Klaus of Innsbruck is obviously a famous sculptor or artist, and it's been cast in bronze just for him. The exclamative sentence here. Um, so we can see that the Duke of Ferrara is not a very nice man. Um, so there's your language and structural points. But also, we could talk about the ideas of love in this poem are that it can be. I mean, this is very negative. If my pen will just work, negative view of love, that it is possessive, controlling, jealous, um, leads to violence, and death, threatening, bitter, deceitful, because he thinks she's been deceitful. All of these things, that's the view of love. So it could go with any of the negative view of love poems, such as neutral tones, 
perhaps La Belle Dame as well in this one to show those possessive, obsessive bits. But it could also be completely contrasted with the really positive poems um, like um, the sonnet by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, How Do I Love Thee, Sonnet 43. Um, and perhaps things like The Manhunt, which is also about um, somebody talking about a spouse, because this is about a, a wife and that's about a husband. But in a very different way, her love in The Manhunt is much more kind of um, nurturing and caring than this one, of course. <laughs> 